This is Casey Dare with Obadiah's. Today, folks, we are going to explain how you can install your wood stove, whether it's a cook stove or just a regular furnace, wood furnace, into a very small area that has minimal, if not non-existent, by conventional means, clearances. We're going to put it right there in the corner. First thing we're going to do is install this product here. It's uh, radiant reflective insole sheeting. Comes in four foot rolls, four foot wide that is, by various lengths. Uh, this particular style is about a quarter inch thick. What we're going to do, folks, is we're going to take this product and we're going to put it first right up against the uh, stud wall it's going to go clear the floor stop at the floor and then uh, after I get that done folks we'll go from there okay as you can see I've already put up the uh, heat reflective membrane it's uh, just stapled on there pretty simple task cutouts for your outlets there okay let's talk a minute about uh, why are we doing this well this membrane actually reflects it's going to reflect heat residual heat that's absorbing into the uh, duo rock it's a cement board it's half inch thick you can see down here I've already gotten started on the uh, bottom row here. Here's the next piece to go up. I got to make cutouts for my uh, switches. The uh, reflective membrane will, like I said, reflect back any residual heat that is being uh, lost through the uh, heat sink of the uh, the rock. Uh, by the time we get done here this is going to be a really good job and you'll be able to learn how and why you're doing what you're doing safely so that you can have a wood burning cook stove, wood furnace, whatever you desire to have in your home as a very useful uh, uh, primary source of heat or secondary in case the power goes off yeah, think about that, folks. When the power goes off for a couple of days and it's December outside, so you want to have a backup heat, which is why it's a good good idea to install yourself a wood burning furnace. This is going to be a neat little project right here. You can see where the stove pipe is going to go up to there through the roof. This is a single layer of Dura Rock cement board. This is going to be the first layer. Uh, I'm going to screw that down after a few moments. First, let me tell you exactly what's going on here. Is this side over here has one layer as well. And after uh, we get this all covered with one layer of Dura Rock. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut some uh, metal studs. They're one inch thick. And we're going to run them about a foot apart up and down here. And that's going to give us our one inch standout for airflow, which I'll talk to you later about. But what, briefly what that does is it allows cold air to come on in from the bottom because that's where all of our coldest air is, is on the floor. And the natural convection will bring cold air in from the bottom because there's going to be this space underneath, which you'll see later. And that's going to flow up in between the layers of this rock and the other rock, Dura rock. Oh, thanks. Here you go. This is just kind of a example. It's going to stand out about one inch, this whole second wall. And the air flows up in between them the cool air which will uh, exhaust any heat that's building up right out the top just like a chimney it's a perfect design it's foolproof 
after the sheet or the uh, door rock is all in place see here it's all in place all around here's a stud get that out of the way get out of the way there stud cutouts for your uh, electrical switches whatever you have clear to the floor don't let that off color fool you that's all do or rock down there clear to the floor now uh, as you you might be able to notice you got you gonna have a few gaps where it joins there and in the corners and up here I've already started to uh, seal it up with some uh, quick set uh, mortar works fine just mix some batch up and fill in the gaps you don't want any chance of any thing flammable getting in there remember folks this is going to be the inside of your chimney so to speak okay so by the off chance maybe uh, a rogue spark gets up in there it cannot find its way into one of those cracks we're going to fill them in we're coming along pretty well here as you can see the uh, metal studs are in place on the Dura Rock uh, substrata, um, which has been, as you can see, all sealed up, complete with uh, some quick set in the seams where the Dura Rock came together. It'll give us a 100% non-combustible background, back wall, if you will. This is a, this would be the back wall on the stud. Well, here's our one inch steel spacers. They're actually uh, just a steel stud. They call them a two by four. Uh, they're an inch and a quarter stand out about. This is all going to be our air channel here between these studs. It's going to be air flowing up through between them from the floor. Down here, as you can see, I left myself two inches from the end of the stud to the uh, wooden subfloor. By the time we get the tile laid, it'll be about a one inch space there. And then the next thing for us to do would be to put the next layer of uh, hardy not hardy plank, but uh, Dura Rock cement board over the top of them, of course, and then that will be tiled later on. As you can see here in the corner, we have no st steel studs there, but if you had a regular wood stove to go in the corner, you would want to go ahead and do the corner wall adjacent to the back wall. We aren't doing this in this particular application because our cook stove, as you can see right here, the oven, which is, uh, non, it's not a, is a non-combustion chamber, which over here on the left, this is our combustion chamber, which is the hot side. This is the oven, which is not combustion, but it's, and so it's much cooler by uh, comparison. And as you can see, as we pan over here, that's where the stove is going to sit. And so on the left wall here, um, it's not imp that important to do that. There, here again, if you were installing a wood furnace that had combustion walls all around the stove, you would want to do both walls the same way as we did this. Now, as you can see, um, I've started to screw on the second layer, which would be the outer layer of the um, system. Down below, you can see my two inch blocks that's holding it up off the uh, subfloor. That's going to give us our air flow after the uh, tiles laid on the subfloor. The air is going to travel up here, in here I should say, and then up through this chase. 
So you got an inch and a half or inch and a quarter airflow here. And it's gonna continue all the way out, all the way up to here. And and then out safely, I might add. The main thing you gotta understand, you cannot put wood next to heat. That's why we're using metal studs, a metal wall to do this. And this will have um, hardy board on it with ceramic tile. So it'll be a nice little cubby hole. It's open at the top. There's a ceiling fan here. Um, there's your chimney. And it's open to a lot. The reason I didn't get away with this is because of the fact that it can ventilate. There's no ceiling up here. You could not normally do what I'm doing if you don't have an open ceiling to move the air. As you can see, there's a loft up above. So the air, this area here will act as a, a chimney and the heat will naturally go up. Of course, the blower and the fan up there is gonna help as well. So we are laying down um, our subfloor, which is the base for the tile. It's called the hardy board. And Mr. Deer here, he was nice enough to figure out where the stove would sit and what we did is we put the stove in place first with a heat shield and then Casey cut four of these little blocks like that and we marked them um, on the floor and we laid them down first. first and then what we did is we lay the foil over the top of that and then you take a razor knife and you cut out around where those blocks would be and that's your bubble wrap foil. The idea is it's, it's simply bubble wrap. The stove sitting on top of that would collapse the bubbles. You'd lose any R value that you have. The idea by putting the, um, the bubble wrap underneath reflects the heat back up. So it keeps it from going down into the floor. It's a radiant heat shield. There's going to be ceramic tile on top of this. Now if you were just to take and put the bubble wrap down and not to put them little squares in place underneath the legs of the stove it would collapse the bubbles and probably break your tile over time it may take a couple years so what you want to do is provide support underneath this tile so you walk on here you can actually feel it's kind of cushy so that's the idea here so what we've done is we have this back wall here and it has an air channel right there and then underneath there it goes all you can the way see up. where Casey's hand is all the way up through that chase so the cool air comes up on the floor off the floor hits this warm board and rises so that keeps that wall nice and cool and keeps the heat from transferring through the wall into the combustible wood wall behind it. So we also have a heat shield that we're going to install on the back of this cook stove. Right now from the factory it comes with one single little heat shield. Clearances to combustible on the back of this stove are 36 inches. Now the main thing is the chimney that sits on top of here, if you use single wall chimney your clearances are 16 inches from the edge of this pipe to your combustible wall. That would be 16 inches in the US, 18 in Canada. Now what we have here is double wall chimney. See the vents? This is called DVL. It's made by Simpson. It's, in my opinion, this is the best double wall pipe there is. Some pipe does not have this channel and allow the airflow like these do. This pipe burns cool. I've seen it in a chimney fire and it does not um, get red hot. The other thing is it's got a stainless steel liner inside and that helps it stay cleaner, resist corrosion. This is a lifetime pipe. You never have to replace it. Single wall pipe should be replaced about every 10 years. It will actually rot out and they'll have little pinholes in it. So anyhow, with the combination of double wall pipe, the clearances go to six inches in the United States. So if you're running double wall, instead of having 16 to clearances to combustibles, you're down to about six inches, which is like that. But on the back of the stove, 
we still have 36 inches. This thing here gets really hot. So we have developed a heat shield. And this heat shield mounts on the back of this stove. It's designed in such a way that it has got two layers of steel. There's an inner layer here, and then in here is a channel. So what happens is the air, just like the wall, moves up and comes out here and vents up into the room. So it, it does the exact same thing as the chimney pipe I just showed you. There's two layers of steel, so the clearances of combustibles with this shield would be knocked down to six inches. But because we have also put the heat shield on the wall in the way that that works, we will have zero clearance. So Casey is now going to set the thing behind the stove to give you an idea. And that will basically mount on the back of the stove just about like that. And that will reduce your clearances. So we're going to show you how all this stuff goes together. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Here we are, Obadiah's, hooking up a Simpson DVL Duravent pipe, double wall. As you can see, this is, pipe's been used already before. So now what I'm doing is I'm hooking this pipe up. This is called a universal connector. This is one of Simpson's better ideas. What it does is it fits up into these grooves. you got to kind of play with it. But uh, if you look, there's a groove here and a notch all the way around with a notch. If you look, there's four notches. One there, all the way around. And then what you do is you just line the notches up. <clears throat> Pipe goes right in, just like that. Pipe is in, just like that. So... Slide it in, line up your notches, there's your notch, slide it in, and then twist, and then it locks. And then what you do is you put the next piece of pipe on. But that's very important if you're using DVL pipe, that you use this little silver connector. Very important. Alright folks, this is the finished result. As you can see, this stove is mounted very very tight it's zero clearance installation now the key is you need to understand something my background is engineering i'm a firefighter i did this to show you if you do it properly you pretty much can do anything if you don't do it properly you're going to burn your house down and that's a fact but uh you know it can be done there's a heat shield on the side here. The trick is with my heat shields, if you look, there's a one inch air space on the heat shield itself. You can see the, that air space. There's another air space between the wall. And there's an air space along the edge of the stove. Bottom line is the stove has been burning all winter. Um, I've been testing the stove. I have a special little gizmo here. It is a tester. And I point it at whatever and it gives me a reading. As you can see, it's saying 59 degrees. Pointing it at the stove top. 72 degrees. Pointing it there, it's giving me a reading of 72 degrees. That's the temperature in here right now, 72 degrees. So what I've been doing is taking readings off the wall. You can see where the little laser beam is, I hope. See that little red dot right there? Anyhow, I've been testing this all winter to make sure that this is going to be safe. I built this cabin for my daughter. The last thing I wanted to do is burn down. This is Obadiah's. Bye-bye.